Hello, everyone. Welcome back for our next session. Hello, June. Hello, Joshki. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for the invite. The conference has been amazing so far. Awesome. I'm doing good too. Thank you. <clears throat> Perfect. <laughs> So you both are joining us from California, right? Where exactly are you based? Um, I'm, I'm in the Southern California. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'll go first. <laughs> I'll go first. Yeah, I'm in the Southern California near, near LA, Orange County. Yeah. And I'm in um, San Francisco downtown, right by where the Warriors play. Um, and that's where I'm at. Great. I think you're the, the most far... Uh, hosts that we have today from all the way oh. from Vienna. So uh, for us, it's almost uh, midnight. <laughs> yeah. And I think you have already you have just started your day. So uh, I think you're still fresh and empowered for today's talk. That is awesome. And um, yeah, let me give a quick intro um, on you both. So um, June, you're a talented developer advocate from Omelette. You have 15 years oppressive experience in the engineering field and uh, or in the tech industry and um, you said your journey began at Microsoft when quote chatbots were still stupid <laughs> I really really <laughs> like that uh, that quote and alongside your your passion for technology um, you have quite a unique hobby you have a, a sneaker fetish <laughs> so you uh you made your way through through college through uh, selling sneakers, and I think that is really an awesome idea to do so. Um, so let's be honest today: how many sneakers do you have currently? <laughs> um, let's not talk about that, but um, let's just say I have a of a storage unit to uh, to uh, keep my oversurplus <laughs> of, of sneakers. But um, yeah, I mean, quick story. Um, when I first, I was born in Korea, and when I first immigrated over here to America, um, I learned English by playing basketball um, with with people who aren't Korean. And um, when you play basketball, you have to look cool, and that's how I got into the, the whole sneaker world of of you know getting to the whole Jordan world and all that kind of stuff. So it's still stuck with me today. That's an amazing story. And I think that's one that's really stuck in your head once you've heard that. So that's a that's a good opening one <laughs> for introducing you. And uh, then we also have um, Hoshki on stage. He's a passionate design system engineer at Optimizely. And just like Tiago from Spotify, you have made it your mission to advocate for design system engineering. And I think that is super cool. It's such a great topic. and. Thank you. Um, I think what also makes you stand out is one of your um, your hobbies. So you said you're super creative, you're into art, design. <laughs> and um, then um, you, uh, you shared also that you once were DJ at Coachella, <laughs> which is super cool. I mean, that Thank is you. so awesome. <laughs> Do you think like every engineer should actually have uh, a creative hobby or every design system engineer? Well, yeah, well, I like it. I like I like to have some uh, kind of output that I don't really use my brain, you know, and kind of like, uh, you know, just let my creativity do its own thing. You know, that's how I take those, those like music work. That is so cool. It's also like a good, good balance for, for your daily work, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Awesome. So um, today you will take us on a little journey to learn something about data and analytics and how you can really empower designers and engineers with those statistics. And um, what I really like is that um, you, you give us something at hand to sell our efforts and everything, like all the love and passion we put into our design system projects to sell to stakeholders, to the people with the budget, because sometimes they don't understand what we're actually doing. Um, and if we explain them the benefits of tokens and having reusable components, sometimes it's like, yeah, but can you put that on a PowerPoint slide? Like I, I need to also like present that somewhere where, where you're not around. So um, it's super cool to, um, to see what you have prepared today. 
so that we have a little bit more information at hand to to share with with those people so yeah i'm super excited for that talk because i could definitely use all those information <laughs> in all my projects and uh yeah i already see a lot of hearts floating around so please everyone send some love to those two guys and um the stage is yours well thank you so much for thank that you. warm intro i uh, really appreciate it. and just to address chat um there's something wrong with our zoom today so um our names are swapped yeah. but I don't mind being hosty, hosty for today. So I just want to let you know <laughs> that. Um, let me go ahead and just share my screen really quick. Um, okay, let me go presenter mode. Okay, um, give me some reactions if you can see the um, the PowerPoint or the slide deck so far. Cool. All right, we could go ahead and get started then. So um, thanks again for the warm intro. Um, really excited to be here at this Into Design System conference. And so far, it's been a really, really cool show. Um, I've definitely enjoyed some of the talks that has happened um, yesterday and today. And shout out to uh, Vara and Daniel, who presented yesterday and set the tone for using data and analytics in your design system. So um, we all work with design systems, but how do we know we create a great design system like Stark is saying here, right? You can't just simply do a design system. And I think a great design system is created from a partnership with designers and developers rooted with data. So today we're gonna to talk about how to use data-driven design systems in practice. My name is June, even though it says Hoshki, uh, and I'm a developer advocate for Omelet. And for those of you who don't know, Omelet is a component analytics tool for front-end teams who are working on design systems. Hoshi is joining us here today, and he's a design system engineer at Optimizely, an early user of Omelette. And like you heard, he's a Coachella DJ. Hoshi, thank you so much for joining me here today at this conference. Uh, can you take a minute to introduce yourself and a little bit about what Optimizely does? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, thanks for the introduction. Uh, and thank you uh, into Design Systems to ha for having me as a speaker. And my name is Hoshi. I'm a design system engineer working for Optimizely. And Optimizely is known for A-B testing tool, but we do more than that now. Uh, so including website personalization and feature total capabilities, as well as uh, web content management and digital commerce. Yeah, I had no idea Optimizely did all that. <clears throat> I thought you folks just did A-B testing. So it's really great to hear they have a lot more features mm -hmm. to offer. And uh, before we move on, you know, we have to learn more about your experience as DJ Hoshki at Coachella. So can you tell our friends here a little bit about, you know, how you came to be and, and why, you know, you were spinning at Coachella? Sure, yeah. So I thought I was supposed to be a little set today, but I guess I'm speaking about design systems instead. I don't know how that happened, but yeah. So I come from music background. Before I became a developer, I was, uh, I was a musician. And, you know, as a kind of part of the musical journey, I was invited to play a little set at the Coachella, not the main stage, of course, so not as big as this picture, but on the side stage within the same venue. And yeah, that was one of the bigger gigs, and it's been almost over 10 years, but I still talk about it. And I'm still active in the music scene, and you can kind of see all the records in the back. I have a bunch of records. So. Very cool. And, and you know, Hoshi is just downplaying himself for, your, for folks who aren't <laughs> from the US, uh, Coachella is one of the biggest music festivals we have. And you have like top talents like your Beyonce's, your M&M's, your Billie Eilish's. That's how big of a of a, a, a festival this is. And, you know, pardon our crappy Photoshop here. We couldn't find a, a picture in time uh, when Hoshi was spinning at Coachella. So we made this uh, fun little Photoshop uh, picture of Hoshi DJing in front of the millions and millions of fans that he has. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much for sharing that, Hoshki. Uh, how about we go back into uh, our topic today, which is design systems. So Hoshi, can you share why design system matters at Optimizely? Yes. So design system is very important for Optimizely because Optimizely had multiple acquisitions in the last uh, few years. So there are multiple products line that came from different companies and those had a different look and feel from the rest of the products. And uh, we decided to create a design system to uh, uh, kind of bring a unified look and feel to all the products. Got it. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. You know, um, if a company has acquired a lot of other companies, especially in the last few years, you know, there needs to be something to unify 
you folks to be on brand, to be consistent, and to deliver features a lot faster. And I think that's where the design system comes in here. So for today, we're gonna to talk about three things. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the challenges optimizing you face when creating a design system from the ground up. Second, we're gonna share how Omelette is helping Optimizely create a data-driven design system. And lastly, Hoshi is gonna share the business impact of using Omelette. So uh, before we jump into the challenge you face, Hoshi, can you tell our friends here a little bit about the design system at Optimizely and the team behind it? Uh, yeah, sure. So the Optimizely design system is called Axiom and it's uh, it's been around five, six years, probably like longer than that. And uh, uh, Axiom includes uh, React components, uh, design tokens and guidelines, which is documentation. And my team is made of four people, uh, three developers and one designer, and we are all fully remote. So we are located all over the world, you know, some are in the US, some are in the Europe, and one of them is in, the, in Asia. And this team is very new, like we all joined like last year. So, and we, be, prior to our uh, our team, uh, there was no central team to maintain Axiom design, design systems there. So we just pretty much inherited the code base. So there was a lot of things that we didn't know and it was just in the black box. Yeah, I've been hearing that from a lot of teams as well. You know, they come into a company and they have an old legacy design system and it sounds like it's been around for the last six years. And now um, you actually have uh, uh, this new design system called Axiom where you actually have a team to manage it, you know, and that's, uh, you know, becoming a little bit more common now, but I think, you know, back five, six years ago, you know, a lot of different disciplines would come and help out, right? Maybe some developers, maybe some designers mm -hmm. would come in and maintain that design system. So that's really yeah. good to hear. And, you know, um, part of a design system is the component library. Can you share with our friends here where you store all your components? Yeah, sure. Let me share my screen here. Here we go. Yeah, just like uh, probably most teams use this, but uh, we use Storybook for development of uh, components and also uh, kind of testing and QA purpose too. And we have this uh, one page that lists up a bunch of our components. So it includes like buttons and typographies and colors and alerts and those core components, you know. And we also use Storybook as a kind of documentation too. So when you go into uh, individual story, you can see what those components are and how the description description of it and how they should behave and what kind of variations are there. Got it. So um, just a quick question here, Hoshki, is this all your old legacy components that you mentioned before or are these your new Axiom components that you're currently building out? Oh, these are the Axiom components, the new ones. Okay, and and if you were to estimate, how many components would you have in your in this new Axiom design system? Uh, yeah, so there are between fifty to sixty components, and some has the uh, like the multiple variants within. Got it. Well, thanks for sharing your storybook instance, Hoshki. Uh, mm -hmm. How about we go back into the slides now? So. Um, you know, as we talked about before, a component library is part of a design system. And for me, a design system is an internal product that fuels a whole organization to build better features, faster, more consistent on brand, especially with um, Hoshi's journey where he had a lot of different acquisitions along the way. But just like any kind of public product, there are some challenges when building a design system from the ground up. Hoshi, can you share your journey and some of the roadblocks you face along the way? Sure. So Optimizely has two design systems. Uh, new is Ax new one is Ax the one is Axiom that I work on, and another one that came from acquisition. And we encourage teams to start using the Axiom components, but there are a lot of uh, legacy components being used across the code base, and it's just that difficult to just go back in and then swap everything right away. And so yeah, we wanted a way to identify those legacy components in an automated way, so that we don't have to go into each file and manually find them. And also our current goal is to visualize the component adaption percentage. So, uh, which means action components versus custom components. And the, also the uh, component usage. And the lastly, uh, the impact of updating the component, like uh, can we update this component safely without making regression to other parts of the code base? And all these metrics are useful to understand where our design systems at and uh, how they are being used by the teams. Yeah, that's a great point, Hoshki. I've been hearing from a lot of teams as well who's going through a similar kind of experience as yours. 
where they have an old legacy design system, they have a new design system they're trying to, you know, prop up and, and actually utilize. And if you don't have that, you know, data to kind of dictate, hey, like these are being used a lot or these aren't being used that often, it's kind of hard to be confident on how to evolve and change your design system. So mm -hmm. I'm just curious, uh, what was going on in your world at that time that triggered you to start looking for a solution like Omelette? Yeah, so when we first started investigating, you know, what it would take to achieve this 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 goal, we realized it was going to take a lot of effort uh, to meet all these requirements, such as like collecting data and visualizing those data and communicating that to the to the stakeholders. And for a lean team like ours, it could become a long term goal. But Omelette offers uh, all these uh, features out of the box with almost zero config. And I was wondering what made you guys decide to build Omelette? Yeah, that's a great question, Hoshki. Thanks for asking. So over the last few years, I had the opportunity to talk to a lot of design system teams from companies like Product Board, GitHub, Segment, and Shopify. And it came with you know, three major themes. Uh, the first one, like you mentioned, Hoshki, is really difficult to track component adoption over time. Secondly, folks didn't have detailed usage information about a component to make decisions on either how to improve them or to deprecate them. And lastly, if they do make changes or introduce new components into their design system, they don't know how effective uh, those are. So those are reasons why we decided to build Omelette. Yeah, all those sound very familiar to me. Probably like all other teams are having the same issues. But yeah, I'm glad I found the solution like Omelette. So I think we are ready to go into the demo now. Yeah, let's go ahead and fire up the demo and we'll put the slides to the side. Yep. So. Cool. So this is this is what Omelet looks like. And um, I'm just curious, Hoshki, you know, can you share with our friends here what the setup process mm -hmm. was like? Yes. So, so the setup of Omelet is extremely easy. All you need to do is just install Omelet on your machine. And once it's installed, you go into each code base and run the analysis command, which is just a CLI command. And once analysis is done, it uh, gives you this URL. And when you click on that, it just takes you to this uh, dashboard UI, uh, which is sh being shown on the screen right now. And having the dashboard is very uh, helpful uh, when communicating this information to the stakeholders. Got it. Yeah, and it looks like there is a little checklist on the right-hand side from that chart, which kind of guides new users to make sure you hit all the um, setup process. And like Hoshki mentioned, it's pretty easy to set up. It's just a CLI command. Uh, I want to double click into that point you just said, Hoshki, about you know being the uh, like having a dashboard is very easy uh, to communicate you know your information to other stakeholders. Um, can you kind of double click into this point a little bit? Yeah. So the other tools I've tried were more like text-based data or the JSON uh, file. So even if we have a good set of data that's uh, very useful. Uh, it was harder to communicate that to people who are not very used to reading those, you know, just rows of text or like the JSON format. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. You know, if um, someone's not used to reading a <laughs> JSON file and parse through all that data, it's kind of hard to um, come away with something. But I think with these mm. dashboards, it really democratizes that whole information sharing with other stakeholders within the whole organization. So thanks for sharing that, Hoshki. Uh, how about we go into our first talking point, which is adoption over time. So um, you mentioned before that tracking adoption is really important to the overall health score at Optimizely. Uh, how has Omelet yeah. been helping out with this? Yeah, the Omelet dashboard has predefined charts that becomes available as soon as you scan the code base. And the important metrics for us are uh, the timeline view, which is this a uh, top one component adoption over time. And uh, also this core versus custom adoption by project. And we also needed to know the number of usage per components in each project. And this is not predefined, but it is easy to filter this data out by just changing the filter setting, which I'm going to show in a little bit. Yeah, so um, you know, right when you get into Omelette, you have some predefined or out of the box charts that Omelette provides for you. But um, mm -hmm. like Coach mentioned, you, know, um, you could also create custom charts that is, you know, right for your own workflow. So I'm really glad that, you know, you got Omelet up running so quickly and you got a lot of value from that. And for those of us who hasn't used Omelet yet, can you tell us like what these green and yellow color means here? Yeah, 
So green area represents the ratio of uh, your core components, so cust uh, the component that comes from your design systems. And the yellow area is the custom or the third party component. So uh, anything that's be defined in uh, the product code base would be considered as a, a yellow uh, area. Got it. So the, the green ones, do they symbolize your new Axiom core components that are reusable a lot? And then maybe the yeah. yellow ones uh, represent your one-off, your custom components, or even your legacy components. Am I understanding that right? Yep, exactly. Cool. So like, the, like you said, the overall goal is to, you know, as time progresses, you want that mm -hmm. chart to, you know, be more green so that, you know, you know that, you know, people in your organization actually use your new Axiom design system. And I'm curious, if you didn't have Omelette at that time, um, how would you go about solving this mm. problem? Yeah, so if we didn't have Omelette, we would have had to spend a lot of time and resource on just making this uh, system and maintaining it too. And the adoption over time is usually very difficult to track because it requires capturing the data in like set cadence and storing that, that data somewhere and visualizing it. And the adoption rate by projects is also difficult to achieve without heavy lifting, like crawling through the code base and counting the instances and stuff. And there are other solutions too, but as far as I know, uh, none of those tools actually provides a dashboard or visualized data. But Omelette covers both of these important metrics out of the box, and you can also customize the filtering to get more detailed breakdown. Yeah, there are definitely um, other you know open source tools out there in the wild, but like Hoshki mentioned, you know you might have to do a little bit more to get the dashboard and everything else, um, like what Omelette has, and then you need to kind of manage that new tool within your whole organization, which will probably take more resources um, than using a managed service like Omelette. So thanks for sharing that, Hoshki. Um, how about we move into our second talking point, which is detecting similar components. So uh, when we talked before. You know, you shared that there are a lot of other duplicate components, like the grid component in your design system. How are you addressing these, you know, similar or duplicate components? Yes, uh, for that, I'm using this uh, component list view. Uh, I've pre-selected the filter for this demo, but what this is doing is I'm looking for the components that come from EpiServer UI framework, which is our legacy component library, and that's being used in. Uh, uh, one of our co core products, AppServer CMS. And from this list, you can see there are custom components and uh, number of usage. Uh, based on this information, we can think about strategies to replace these components as a lot of these components are like overlaps with uh, Axiom components because these, these are kind of like core basic components like text buttons and like typography and the list and stuff. And right. this information can be used to come up with the uh, kind of projection of adaption rate. So for example, if I like add up the top, top 10 uh, used components, and if we replace all these with action components, the uh, the green area of that uh, timeline view should go up by X percent. And stuff. Got it. So like you mentioned before, you know, you want more of that green to track upward and onwards, mm -hmm. then you know, you know that other people in your organization are using your new Axiom design system. And this chart is really cool because you know there's these different columns on your you know, the, the frequency of use, when it was updated, and also when it was created. Um, so are all these components in here, are these part of your new Axiom design system or are these your old legacy components you have? Oh, uh, I'm just filtering for the legacy components here. Okay, and then can you share with us like how many of these legacy components you you have? Oh, yeah, there's so many. So just from this list, you can see that you know like there are 82 times being used, and like you know, the list goes down, and there are multiple products. So there's probably like hundreds or thousands even. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a lot. Thousands is a lot to manage. <laughs> how about <laughs> we go into the um, dependency tree view now and kind of show off what what that's all about. Sure. There you go. So yeah, uh, so identifying the component usage is one thing, but another thing we need to be aware of as a design system engineer is that uh, impact of updating components and Omelette's dependency tree view is very helpful for that. Uh, this tree view is a great visualization of the relationship between the components. Uh, for, so from this view, you can see what other parts of the code base can be impacted if you update the, the select component. So you can kind of see like the relationship, you know, what kind of uh, 
how the selected components have been used in other components and stuff here. And this information helped us become more confident in like updating the components and then having the team use it instead. Yeah, I think we talked about this before, right? Having the, the confidence to, you know, evolve your design system to be a little bit more modern and mm -hmm. to see, you know, hey, I'm dealing with all these other legacy components. And then you can kind of see like, okay, it's not being used that much, or you could see all the dependencies as well. And then that will guide you on, you know, what to kind of change up or, or what to put more resource behind that. So thanks for sharing mm -hmm. that, Hoshi. Um, how about we move into our last talking point, which is migration. So understand the usage of each ASIN component is really helpful because it helps you prioritize which ones to update and which ones to deprecate, like we just mentioned. Um, can you double click at this point a little bit? Yes, so the omelet provides this uh, useful chart of components sorted by the usage. And I'm filtering just for the core components, which is the, the components that come from uh, uh, Axon Design System. And as you can see uh, here, uh, some components are being used more than others, you know, and the buttons are, of course, like one of the most used components. And if the components are being used more, those should be uh, prioritized for maintenance and those should be working as expected, you know. And if you go down the list, you can see all these lesser used components and some of them are, you know, these ones like one time or probably like the zero time use ones too. And we can use this uh, this information to come up with like a possibly deprecable component. So we use this information to make a list of uh, components that can be eliminated in the future. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, components are being used not at all, or maybe one mm -hmm. time, or maybe two times. So, you know, like you mentioned before, it really helps you um, guide you on like, hey, we could kind of, you know, take this out now because it's not being used that often. So yep. I'm just curious, you know, um, how are you prioritizing you and your team's time? You know, how do you manage your finite resources with a tool like Omelette? Yeah, so if we didn't have Omelette, we would have had to spend a lot of resources and time setting up and maintaining this tracking system, uh, which is very time consuming. And with the automation from Omelette, we can use the time and resource we save from the automation to work on other tasks, you know, because... Uh, you know, there are a lot of tasks for design system teams. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. You know, I think having that um, actionable data within Omelet really helps you dictate, you know, your team's resources and allocated time. So thanks for sharing that, Hoshki. How about we uh, go back into the slide? Oh, you beat me to it. Um, and we talk about some of the goals you want to achieve by using a tool like Omelet. Yeah, so one of the bigger goals we have is to reduce the number of components. We have over 50 components and we learned that, you know, some components are not being used at all. So Omelette gave us this information. So now we are able to start planning deprecation of those unused components. Yeah, I mean, you know, having thousand components in your component library or in your design system is a little bit harder to manage than, you know, having, you know, um, sub hundred or maybe even a couple hundred uh, components. And then it really, you know, democratizes that, um, you know, information sharing on, you know, what, what components should be used often and that's reusable, right? So um, we talked before and you said that you want to make your components a little bit more modern and a little bit more sexier. What does that mean, Hoshki? <laughs> yeah, so we recently conducted a little user research and from the user feedback, we learned some teams think that Axiom doesn't look like a modern component library because the design look a little bit outdated or has very corporate feel. So we draw inspiration from like open source design systems such as uh, Material Design or the Shopify, you know, or uh, the Spotify too, and also uh, Washington Post. And we want to build off those inspiration, uh, hoping to bring Axiom to more developers. And Omelette's dependency tribute info was very useful as it visualized the component relationship and hierarchy. Yeah, that's great to hear, you know, and taking inspiration from you know, Google's material design, or like you mentioned, uh, Washington Post uh, 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 design system that they open source, I think about a year ago or two years ago, um, and really helps you, you know, kind of shed off that corporate feel and, and make you a little bit more modernized. So thanks for sharing that, Hoshki. And how about we kind of switch gears into um, tracking? So designers track components in Figma and developers use Storybook to manage their components like you showed us a little bit earlier on. 
how did omelet fit in this equation here? You know, how is omelet different than the Figma component tracking or the management mm -hmm. you find in Storybook? Yeah, so that's very true that there's a way to count component instances in Figma for the design systems, but there's no easy way or tools that does that for the code side or like for the, uh, the end application. So while we can use Storybook to develop and document the components, uh, it does not support tracking or anal analysis of the component usage. But now we can use Omelette as a middle ground for developers and designer. And by scanning the code base, we can uh, get the information about how end product uses our design system. And this can be shared between devs and designer easily with this uh, uh, dashboard. Got it. Got it. So it sounds like, you know, Omelette kind of picked up where you know, Figma and Storybook kind of left off where Alma is mm. tracking what is shipped in the, in the application, not just in the design system. How valuable is it to know the actual usage of the components in your end application? Yeah, so that's the main reason we wanted a tool like Omelette. You know, design system doesn't mean anything if it wasn't used in the application or the products. But, you know, if you don't know how the design system is being used, we wouldn't know how to support the product team's needs or how to improve the system. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, um, you know, products should be built, built on, you know, the user first kind of experience. And I think with something like Omelet, it really helps you track the instances that components being used, which will dictate your, you know, your design system moving forward. So after adopting and tracking your components, Hoshki, what are some of the results from that? Yeah, so as a result of this automated tracking system, we can easily communicate the adoption progress to the stakeholders. And another benefit we are gaining is that when we need to quickly know the usage of the component, uh, we can pull up Omelette and get the information. So for example, we were talking about updating table component recently, and we needed to know the impact of updating existing component. So we went into Omelette, check the usage counts and the dependencies and turned out the table is used extensively in multiple apps. So we are creating a new experiment table component instead of refactoring existing one to minimize the risk of breaking it. Yeah, I'm glad that the, you know, the all the dependency tree view and knowing the usage count of each component really helped you realize what to do with that table component. So thanks for sharing that, Hoshki. Uh, how about we move into um, more of the business impact? So can you share with our friends here uh, what the business impact of using Omelet within Optimizely? Yes, so the initial run of Omelet analysis exposed a lot of uh, data that came kind of surprising to us, like finding out the number of unused components uh, or which team is using more Axiom and which team is using less and so on. So now we have this information, we can plan on how to improve the components to satisfy the product needs and how to help the teams to remove those pain points when adopting Axiom components. And we kind of have a new mantra and I have to give shout out to Masato because he is the one who gave me this quote, but uh, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Well, shout out to Masato. He's in the chat right now. So you folks can say hello to him, but I love that saying, I love that slogan or that mantra. If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And going back to your Coachella days, uh, we really should have a t-shirt like this in your merch store and this awesome design. You know, I, I would definitely want one. Make sure you save me a size mm -hmm. and medium. But um, yeah, I, I, I love this t-shirt and, and hopefully you could get the merch store up so we could all buy yeah. some things from you. I, I might really make it. That, that looks pretty cool. Well, well, like I said, save me one, please. <laughs> um, so that's really great. So it, it seems like, you know, just doing a quick recap here, um, measuring component adoption over time really solved that tracking issue you had before. Then you detected similar components and replaced them with Axiom components to improve your overall component adoption. And finally, you're able to know the usage of all your core components. So now you know with data what components to prioritize and what should be deprecated or maybe what should be put more resources behind it. Uh, I'm curious, after you got a lot of benefit from using Omelette, did any of your higher-ups have any feedback for this design system initiative that you're currently uh, spearheading? Oh, yeah. So our CTO is now interested in knowing the overall progress of Axiom uh, adoption so he can encourage teams to you know, push adoption. And now more high-ups are aware of you know, adoption progress. So we have better support to push adoption for the teams too. 
which which is great, you know. And my team also needed an adoption progress board as well to visualize how our how our product is doing in general. And Omelette helped a lot to achieve this goal and then saved a lot of times for us. Yeah, I think I, I think we touched on this point a little bit before, but having that um, the chart, you know, is really easy for different roles and dis different disciplines to really get the information that they need about the designs mm -hmm. that you, know, you guys are currently embarking on in terms of Axiom. And in terms of your CTO, that, you know, for sure makes sense because as a CTO, you definitely want efficiency and you want the whole team to, you know, call, kind of follow one kind of um, uh, tone and voice and design language. And the design system really kind of anchors that. And, you know, if you have a more manageable design system, then more of your team will use it. And like we said before, then you'll get more of that, you know, green trending right to signify that, you know, folks are using your uh, new Axiom design system. So... Uh, last question for you, Hoshki. Uh, if you were the CEO of Omelette and you had full control over our roadmap, uh, what features would you love to see? Yes, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, GitHub integration. We have many repositories in the organization and I'm pretty much running it manually. So st streamlining or automating the scanning process would save us a lot of time. And also the prop usage, tracking prop usage will be very helpful too. So we can learn how the teams are using components and we can come up with the, you know, or decide what to improve about our system. And I'm very curious what's on the uh, Omelette roadmap for the future releases. Yeah, that's a great question, Hoshiki. Thanks for asking me that. So right now, our immediate goal is to provide more visibility to component adoption. And to extend this thought, we are considering things like, like you mentioned, prop usage, uh, design tokens, and other framework support, because right now, Omnit only supports React and React Native, but we're looking at other frameworks like Vue a little bit down the line. And if you're looking a little bit further, uh, we are also getting a lot of feedback from front-end developers um, to kind of shape and mold what features we build out next. So that's kind of how Omnit kind of flows, is you know we really are feedback-driven, so I encourage uh, people in the audience, if this tool is applicable to your workflow, go ahead and take a test drive and let us know, you know what you like about it or what features that we could kind of improve on, and we'll take that very seriously. So we'll share a QR code a little in, in a little bit, but um, we are very feedback-driven here at Almond. So, um, Hoshki, this camera is yours. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any final words or any plugs that you want to kind of share with our friends here? Yeah, well, I don't have any announcement for my DJ gigs, but you know something from <laughs> Optimizely. Uh, so we recently released a new feature called Rollout, and Rollout is a free feature flagging platform. So the key features includes like managing features in one place, uh, targeting specific user groups, or if there's any errors, there's quick recovery mode, and SDKs are all uh, open source too, so it's easy to plug it in. And the best part is uh, it's free. No credit card is required. So if you're interested in, you know, there's more information available on the Optimizely website. Oh, that's very cool. And my favorite part is no credit card required. You know, that's <laughs> the magic words for me. And uh, um, really quickly, is, is Rollout currently in beta or is it GA or what's the oh, no, it's It's already out. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, if you folks are interested in rollout, go ahead and check out the Optimizely website. And thanks again, Hoshki, for joining me here today. You know, it was great to speak with you at this awesome conference called Into the Design Systems and sharing your experiences yeah. that you have with Omelette. And like I said before, here is a QR code for you folks if you want to go ahead and give Omelette a, a test drive and try out um, you know, our, our public beta right now. And you know, feel free to either you know message me on Twitter or you could just reach out to me either LinkedIn or you could email me at june at zeppelin.io, which one is most uh, uh, convenient for you. And thanks again, everyone, for listening. And um, we'll go ahead and answer any questions that are in the chat now. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing so much details on this <laughs> really Awesome demo. Um, I think you guys, you received so many reactions. I don't know if you were able to see them during the presentation. And oh, cool. um, I think you do have a new fan base as a co-hosting <laughs> team. <laughs> so shout out to that. And um, yeah, there are some questions, but before we jump into this, I have to say, 
um, like just a few weeks or, or months ago, um, we had exactly that issue on my project. We were like, hey, we have this uh, um, data analytics in Figma, in, in the org plan, and um, it's so cool. We can have a look like how are the components used, but we have no idea what's happening <laughs> with, the, with the components we have in, uh, in Storybook or in code. And our de developers were like, we don't know. We don't know what people do with it. Uh, it's it's too complex. So um, this is awesome. So I would definitely pitch that to our engineering team to to have a look at that. And um, you said for now you you will support React and React Native, right? Just to confirm that. Yeah, yeah. Right now we only support React and React Native, but like I said, we're looking for other framework support like Vue because we've been hearing a lot of feedback. So um, yeah, like if there's any, any other framework that you folks are interested in, feel free to reach out and, and we'll make sure to put that on our roadmap and catalog that as well. Great, awesome. So yeah, let's let's have a look at a few questions. Cool. So there, um, there was one question, um, we hear this all the time, efficiency. <laughs> and to mm -hmm. be honest, I have no idea how to measure this. Have you had any experience gathering data to support and define? Efficiency. Efficiency is uh, well. Do, do you have anything to plug this in, Jiren? As far as like omelet is involved. Um, I mean, I think I think omelet, like you know, like you mentioned, like the features that we talked about and some of the issues that you were kind of overcoming. I think those all kind of um go under the umbrella of 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 efficiency, right? Knowing the usage of the components, knowing um you know, the adoption of your components and making sure you have the information equipped to make, you know, uh, actionable mm -hmm. actions for your design system and be confident on how you evolve your design system. I think that's all within the efficiency realm. And also, like you mentioned, Hoshi, I think it's um, the dashboards that we really uh, love to kind of share with other roles within our organization, mm -hmm. because like, you know, we all know that a product kind of takes the, you know, the whole village, so to say. And if you really democratize that information, um, and it's really easy for other people to read. I think that would really help with the overall efficiency in terms of kind of shaping and molding your own internal design system within your own organization. But Hoshi, you could go ahead and tell your own personal yeah. experience with, at, at Optimizely. Yeah, as an Omelette user, like, um, so being able to share the information is a crucial part of this, uh, this uh, tracking measurement, you know. So like even if you have a data, you know, if you can't communicate that or like show it to uh, stakeholders, it doesn't really mean anything. So yeah, having this UI uh, dashboard UI is like really helping us, you know, just to share this uh, information with like designers or like, you know, the PMs and all. Yeah, and also you mentioned this example of having all those custom components, right? I mean, mm -hmm. everything built custom is not really efficient, probably. Right, yeah. <laughs> so if, yeah. if there is an... Uh, an opportunity for uh, increasing adoption. I think that is also mm. paying off for efficiency. So yeah, yep. awesome. Cool, yeah, there, there is another question. Um, I think this is uh, coming from the designers because um, <laughs> this of course is super cool that we all now have the superpower for um, components in code. But um, I mean, we have the analytics feature in Figma, but it's somehow limited. It doesn't provide all the cool views that you just shared. Is there maybe also a plan to integrate something like that for, for data that is coming from Figma? And um, mm. I think there was another question. Is it possible maybe to, to see those two next to each other? Is that maybe also something you would take a look at? Yeah, I think those are great insights and i think that um right now we're in public beta so we're still like i said before we're still trying to get um all the feedback we can to kind of dictate the final ga product and those things definitely make sense in my head and i'll kind of bubble that up to our product team so thanks for sharing those um examples and and um you know kind of thinking outside the box here and i think that will really um, complete the picture you know you have the developer side and now you have a, like a film integration to kind of um, boost that side as well. Awesome. Cool. I think that would make many people very happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I think we have heard a lot about data and what valuable insights you can create over the last few days. So I think a lot more people are now super interested in that topic. And um, maybe I think one more, one more question would be great. Um, 
there was one question if omelet can be self-hosted that's a great question and um um, Hoshkin and I actually gave this talk um, at, at uh, another developer conference called React Miami about a month and a half, two months ago. And we met a lot of different teams who um, had a lot of security issues or PII issues, or um, they just want to kind of, you know, host the data on-prem. So we're looking, um, we're kind of calling all that information now or that feedback now. Right now, we don't have an on-prem solution. Um, but it's definitely, I think, on our roadmap. I don't think our, on our immediate roadmap because there's other features we want to build out for GA. But um, those, those are definitely um, things that we've heard in the past, especially for um, specialized industries such as banking or healthcare or you know just um, some other tech companies that has really um, secure data. So thanks for calling that out. And I'll definitely bring that feedback over to the team. And I'll let them know that we have another um, calling for an on-prem solution. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I think there are a few more questions in the board. Um, if you have time, feel free to, to go over them and um, take your time to answer them. Um, yeah, huge thank you for this really valuable insight. As I said, I would love to use this tool. Um, I think mm -hmm. it's super cool. And it was yeah. also great to have a look at um, Optimizely to understand a little bit better, like how you guys work. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining today. And oh, um, yeah, have yeah, a great rest this, of the um, day. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, if folks want to try Omelette, it's completely free right now. Um, so we're, we're in, in public beta and we haven't even touched about the pricing yet. So if anyone's interested in the audience, feel free to take a test drive. It won't cost you anything. And um, like I said before, we're really feedback driven. So that'd be really helpful if you could just shout it out to me or to the Omelette team. But thank you so much for having us. This was a great experience. and. Uh, a, a more exp uh, amazing conference that I've been to virtually. So kudos to you folks and your team. Awesome. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.